All right. Yeah. So Dean has kind of a follow-up since we were using the parabolic SAR for a trailing stop loss earlier, right? So Albert's observing that, yeah, frequently the parabolic SAR, you know, or any kind of, you know, uh, stop loss type of indicator, you know, is often on the wrong side of the market, you know? So if you're using a, a trailing stop loss type of indicator, and it's on the wrong side of the market, you know, for, you know, for uh, any given trade, is there a way to not use that indicator? So is there a way to not use the parabolic SAR as the stop loss until it gets to the correct side of the market? Um, so yeah, there absolutely is. So let's, let's remove this stop loss here and we'll just start from scratch. So let's go to the, trailing menu here, and we'll just refresh this parabolic SAR trailing stop loss. So we'll start from scratch here. So the first thing you have to do is on the options tab. So the, the main problem is, or the first problem is your initial placement, right? So if the parabolic SAR or, you know, whatever, you know, stop loss indicator you want to use, you know, if it's on the wrong side of the market, well, you know, the initial placement is, is going to prevent the trade from happening, right? So Blackbird does do a preliminary check. So when you're using an indicator, Blackbird will grab the value of that indicator and well, Blackbird actually will calculate the initial placement price, right? So whatever this price calculates out to be for your stop loss, Blackbird obviously it calculates that first and then checks it against where the market's trading, right? It checks it against the last trade to make sure that this calculated price is on the correct side of the market. And if it's not, then it's not gonna execute the trade, right? It's gonna give you a little warning message, you know, telling you that, hey, your stop loss would have been on the wrong side of the market. And so the, the trade was skipped. Right. And so you'll see, you'll see messages on the log tab here. Whenever a trade is skipped because the stop loss was was going to be placed in a in on an invalid price, you know, the, the log tab is going to notify you that as to why Blackbird didn't execute the trade. So uh, first thing to take care of is the initial placement. So basically you just have to abandon using an indicator, right? Because you can't, unless you have a custom indicator, right? Um, you know, if you had a custom indicator made that guarantee that, you know, so that the indicator itself actually, um, no, you know what? I take that back. Sorry. <laughs> That's impossible to do. Sorry. So no, there is no way to program an indicator to give you, stop loss values on both sides of the market. Um, oh, wait, actually, yeah, actually it would be possible. Sorry. So yeah, let me go back to my original thought is you could theoretically program a stop loss based indicator that generates a valid price on both sides of the market. So, but the parabolic star is not one of them. Um, and neither is the super trend indicator, right? The super trend indicator is not one of those indicators either. So um, I have yet to see an indicator do that. So, but it is possible. All right. So uh, again, step one is we can't use an indicator value. So we'll have to, to set this to price. We'll have to change the mode to price. And based on the entry, you know, let's just set this up as like an ATR stop loss, right? So we'll just set up the ATR indicator here. And, you know, let's just make it, I don't know, whatever, a two or three ATR stop loss, right? So the initial placement of our stop loss, you know, will be some kind of ATR multiple. And that's always gonna work, right? Because, you know, why does this always work? Because you're taking the entry price and then you're offsetting 
from the entry price using the ATR, right? Or of course, you know, if you don't want to use the ATR, you know, we could just say, you know, 30 ticks, you know, off of the entry price. You know, again, those always work. So, right. And then in the trailing actions, um, before the trailing can begin, we need to put in a trigger condition, right? And that trigger condition is basically um, checking to make sure that the indicator is on the correct side of the market, right? So if we're in a long trade, we want the parabolic XR below uh, the bars, right? We want the parabolic XR below the low of the bar. You know, that way we know that the parabolic SAR or whatever indicator you want to use, right, is on the correct side of the market. So to do that, right, to compare your indicator to the bar prices, we can use price versus indicator right there. All right, price versus indicator. And uh, for input A, let's see here. Um, instead of the closing price, we should probably use the low of the bar, right? The low of the bar. And if you wanted to, you could add an offset. So you could say the look, we could take the low of the bar and then subtract another 10 ticks. So what that, you know, negative 10 tick offset does is, right, it's going to take the low, low price of the bar. Right, so let's let's take this hammer right here. So if we take the low price of the bar, subtract 10 ticks, then the indicator has to be 10 ticks below the low of that bar, right? In order for this trigger, you know, to um, to become true. Right. So simply put, this adds a 10 tick buffer from the low of the bar, you know. And vice versa for a short trade, right? It takes the high of the bar and add, adds a 10 tick buffer to the high of the bar, right? So you can add a buffer here by using the offset if you want to. And then input B, well, that's going to be our stop loss indicator. So in this place, so, so, uh, so in our example here, it'll be the parabolic SAR. So let's open this up and we'll load in the parabolic SAR. All right, there's the parabolic SAR. And of course, I'm just using the default settings here. Now we have to set the mode correctly. So if it's a long trade, um, we want A equal or above B. Yeah, so we want the low minus 10 ticks to be above B, the parabolic SAR. So the modes are actually set correctly for us. So if it was a short trade, right, we would want A, which would be the high price plus 10 ticks. Um, I'm sorry, we got this backwards. Sorry. So no, for a long mode, we want, yeah, we do want A above B. Um, so for a short trade, yeah, we want A below B. Yes, right. We want the high below the parabolic star. Okay, so yeah, it was correct. So there we go. So now this trigger is going to verify that the low or the high of the bar is on the correct side of the parabolic star. Right. And so once this trigger becomes true, then this trailing rule, uh, you know, will become active. You know, this trailing rule can then start executing. So, all right. So that's basically the bottom line is when you're using an indicator, you know, to trail your stop losses, you know, uh, you probably want to put in this price versus indicator uh, trigger rule here um, or this, this trigger you know, to make sure that the indicator 
is on the correct side of the market. All right, so that's Albert's question there. And there are other you know, videos out there. There are other workshop videos out there that basically describe exactly what we just did here too. So, all right. So it looks like Albert has some uh, trailing rules to um, kind of clean up this weekend. Yeah. <laughs>